Grace and peace to each of you. Welcome to our online worship at Lovely Lane United Methodist Church. My name is Scott Metter, lead pastor. So glad that you've come to join us. It is August 23rd as you worship with us today. We've actually taped the service just a bit ahead of time as the power came back on at the church. We weren't quite certain about the internet, so we thought we'd go ahead and tape the worship ahead of time. But again, so glad that each of you are here. Glad that we can worship together as one. It's been a very uh, challenging couple of weeks, a very trying couple of weeks after the storm, but again, so glad that we can come here together as the body of Christ. I do want to mention a few announcements in life of the church. I want to mention that this afternoon at 2 o'clock, we're having a blessing of the backpacks in our church parking lot, and then at 4 o'clock, we'll be having a confirmation worship service. We'll have just the confirmation students here in the sanctuary at 4 o'clock, and then pictures with the family outside in our parking lot at 4.45. But also mentioned on a Tuesday, beginning about to noontime, the Kennedy Food Pantry will be setting up on our church lawn. We did this last week and had a, uh, just a sensational turnout, so we're going to do it again. So uh, canned goods and other non-perishable items can be brought here. And if you need to pick something up as a uh, bit of a help to your family, go ahead and do that too. So it's kind of a, a bringing in and also a taking out. But again, the Kennedy Food Pantry will be here on our church lawn on a Tuesday, beginning and to noontime. With anything else going on, make sure that you contact our church. If we can help with anything at all, let us know. It's been, again, a tough time. We want to help out in any way that we can. With all of this, we'll now have Pastor Christina lead us into our opening prayer. Will you pray with me? Loving and most gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful Sunday morning. We give you thanks for... Um, that morning cup of coffee or tea. Um, maybe we're spending it outside in your creation, and maybe we're spending it um, around the television uh, to watch um, this Sunday service. God, I pray that you might be present um, in e any space where we're, where we're coming together for worship, God. I pray that you would touch our hearts um, as we listen to the word from Habakkuk um, this morning. Um, God, be with us into this day and into this week, and we pray these things in your Son's name. Amen. Thank you, Christina, for the opening prayer. We're now blessed to have some special music from Charlie and Deb Kuchera. Sends 
This is Pastor Christina. I don't know about you, but I am sad. I'm, I'm sad for these beloved trees in Cedar Rapids that were destroyed, some damaged. You know, I'm, I'm sad that these, these trees that provided shade for pioneers that started the city of Cedar Rapids are these same trees that provide the shade for us today. They provide shade for our houses. They provide oxygen for the air. Um, and, you know, I know these trees also damaged our, our homes. Um, they damaged my home. They damaged many of yours. Some of your homes are unable to be lived in. And, you know, these trees also provide homes for many, many different kinds of species. You know, our, our birds don't know what to do because their home is gone. Um, you know, the chipmunks in my yard are scurrying everywhere, unsure of what's happening. And our squirrels are, um, you know, in a chaotic space um, when all these trees fell down. Um, but there's also hope of resurrection and new birth. Um, I'm reminded of every autumn, uh, the trees turn beautiful colors and fall to the ground. And these wintertime trees look very sad, but we have the promise of spring, that there are new buds, new creation, new leaves, new branches, and again, we will have a beautiful canopy and a beautiful summer shade once again. And again, I'm reminded by one of my favorite poems called The Sacrament of Letting Go. Slowly she celebrated the sacrament of letting go. First she surrendered her green, then her orange, yellow, and red. Finally, she let go of her own brown. Shedding her last leaf, she stood empty and silent, stripped bare. Leaning against the winter sky, she began her vigil of trust. Shedding her last leaf, she watched it journey to the ground. She stood in silence, wearing the colors of emptiness. Her branches wondering, how do you give shade with so much gone? And then the sacrament of waiting began. The sunrise and the sunset watched with tenderness clothing her with silhouettes that kept her alive. They helped her to understand that her vulnerability, her dependence and need, and her emptiness, her readiness to receive, were giving her a new kind of beauty. And every morning and every evening, they stood in silence and celebrated together the sacrament of waiting. And again, boys and girls, we are waiting for a new birth, we're waiting for spring, for resurrection, for new life, for hope that, you know, this little tiny Norfolk pine tree is one day going to grow into something magnificent. And so I want to leave you with, um, you know, this, this hope and this waiting, um, this active waiting that we've been learning about in Habakkuk, that, you know, these trees are one day going to bring a shade once again. I hope you have a great week. Hear these words from Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 through 19. The prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, according to Shigioneth. Lord, I have heard your reputation. I have seen your work. Over time, revive it. Over time, make it known. Though angry, remember compassion. God comes from Taman, the Holy One, from the mountain of Paran. His majesty covers the heavens, and his praise fills the earth. His radiance is like the sunlight, with rays flashing from his hand. That is the hiding place of his power. 
Pestilence walks in front of him. Plague marches at his feet. He stops and measures the earth. He looks and set out against the nations. The everlasting mountains collapse. The eternal hills bow down. The eternal paths belong to him. I saw the tenants of Cushan under duress. The mountains of the land of Midian were quaking. Was the Lord raging against the rivers? Or was your danger directed against the rivers? Or was your fury directed against the sea? When you rode on your horses, or rode your chariots to victory, you raise up your empty bow, uttering curses for the arrows. With the rivers you split open the earth. The mountains see you and writhe. A flood of water rushes through. The deep utters its voice. It raises its hands aloft. Sun and moon stand still high above. With the light, your arrows shoot, your spear at the flash of lightning. In fury, you stride the earth. In anger, you tread the nations. You go out to save your people. For the salvation of your anointed, you smash the head of the house of wickedness, laying bare the foundation up to the neck. You pierce the head of his warrior with his own spear. His warriors are driven off, those who take delight in oppressing us, those who take pleasure in secretly devouring the poor. You make your horses tread on the sea, turbulent waters foam. I hear, and my insides tremble, my lips quiver at the sound. Rottiness enters my bones, I tremble while I stand, while I wait for the day of distress to come against the people who attack us. Though the fig tree doesn't bloom, and there's no produce on the vine. Though the olive crop withers, and the fields don't provide food. Though the sheep is cut off from the pen, and there is no cattle in the stalls. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my deliverance. The Lord God is my strength. He will set my feet like the deer. He will let me walk upon the heights. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 11, beginning with the first verse, teaching the disciples to pray. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation. He also said to them, Imagine that one of you has a friend, and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, Friend, loan me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further that he answers from within the house. Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. And I tell you, ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives, whoever seeks finds. To everyone who knocks, the door is opened. Here ends our reading from God's holy word. These last two weeks in Cedar Rapids and Marion have been exhausting, they've been emotional. For many of us, things got very interesting on August 10th. We had a derecho, this uh, straight line of storms coming to our area. It's about uh, 12.30 on that uh, Monday. Within time, we noticed that there was uh, heavy rain going on, that we had trees falling down, that we had roof damage all around us. We spent these last a couple of weeks uh, cleaning up. We've been taking down trees. We've been taking debris out to the curb. And we have been coming together. And we've also been comforted. It's been great to see utility trucks come and go. It's been great to see skid loaders and uh, dump trucks remove the debris 
by the, uh, by the side of the road. It's been good to see so many things happening. Many of us have gotten to know our insurance agent uh, quite well. Many of us have found out things about certain people that we never knew before. Through all of this that's been going on after these storms, after the derecho, we've had all types of God sightings. Many of us have gotten out of our comfort zone to assist others. We've also had silver linings. We've had all types of silver linings going on in the aftermath of this derecho. We've had neighbors getting to know each other, maybe even for the first time. We've also come to see that we can live with less. We don't need to have the power on all the time. We don't need to have the TV on all the time. We can live with less. I think we've also gained a greater appreciation for those who work behind the scenes to make our city run. Certainly there have been these uh, silver linings going on. Now, as we've been kind of moving forward over these last couple of weeks, some words that we've heard spoken a lot are these thoughts and prayers. Haven't we heard these words a lot? People have been sending these words to us. We've been sending these words to others. We've been posting these words on social media, thoughts and prayers. Now, that sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? But for some people, thoughts and prayers kind of have an empty feeling to it. I think I began to notice this back in 2017 after the... Uh, mass uh, shootings that took place in uh, Las Vegas. A lot of uh, leader types, a lot of people in power simply lifted up the words thoughts and prayers, and for some people this was not what they wanted. It seemed very cold that somebody was simply saying thoughts and prayers. People were saying we need more than this, we need action. But I happen to think that thoughts and prayers are not inaction. I happen to think that thoughts and prayers are action. Our prayers make a difference, and our prayers move us to assist our fellow person. Prayer is powerful. I think three out of four Americans truly do believe in the power of prayer, and in our Judeo-Christian understanding of things, we see that God is not some kind of watchmaker who created the world and is now distant and aloof. Our God is close to us, and as we pray, God bends God's ear to us, and God hears us, and God helps us move forward. Again, prayer is powerful. I think about the words of Billy Sunday, the great preacher from the early 1900s. He said that uh, if you are a stranger to prayer, you are a stranger to one of the greatest powers and forces out there. Prayer can change us. Thoughts and prayers, I believe, are very good if we understand the full effect. And as we talk about prayer, we talk about Jesus. Jesus told us to pray. In our gospel reading today, we have a, a bit of a take on the Lord's Prayer. But then right after that, we have Jesus giving us a great story. And this is a great story that we find in Luke chapter 11. As the story goes, we find that a man is asleep in his house. He's there with his wife and kids. And about midnight, there's a knock on the door. I mean, it's, it's, it's midnight, there's a knock on the door, and it's a neighbor. And the neighbor says to this guy, I've got some visitors, I've got some company. Can you give me three loaves of bread? And this guy's like, this is crazy. It's the middle of the night. You want me to give you three loaves of bread? But this neighbor says, yeah, I need three loaves of bread. But this guy says, no way, and he shuts the door. You would think that that kind of ends things. But this neighbor comes back. He's persistent. He knocks on the door again, and he says, you don't understand. I've got company. I need three loaves of bread. And again, this guy in the house is like, no way on earth. But eventually, there's a voice in the background, and it's this man's wife. And he says, for crying out loud, will you just give the neighbor the bread? Now, Jesus tells this story, and I'm sure he told it with a bit of a twinkle in his eye. But the point is, if we are persistent, we get what we want. As we come to God in prayer, we get what we want. It's not fame and fortune. It's not material possessions. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit. As we come to God in prayer, we are given the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit is what moves us to take action. That's where prayer has power. The Holy Spirit moves us to take action. It moves us to make a difference. Prayer changes us. When I was a young pastor serving in the uh, Dubuque area, I became familiar with a spiritual advisor. In fact, she became my spiritual advisor. Her name is Sister Marie Louise. She worked across the uh, Mississippi River in Wisconsin at the Cincinnati Mound Retreat Center. And once a month, I would go and visit Sister Marie Louise. And basically, she taught me how to pray. I'd already finished up seminary. You would think that I knew how to pray, but I had a lot to learn. 
So Sister Marie Louise took me back to the beginning, kind of explained what prayer is all about, and she built me up. And something that Sister Marie Louise stressed over and over again is that prayer changes us. Oh, we want to pray to God as a child. We want to come to God with that simple prayer. We want to come to God with that sense that God can do anything, that sense of wonder. But she says that ultimately what prayer does is prayer changes us. And as we pray, we are moved to be a person of action. We are moved to make a difference. Now, when we talk about these words, thoughts, and prayers, we're talking about others. We want to be there for others. And what we're talking about is intercessory prayer. Richard Foster, in his book entitled Prayer, talks about all these different types of prayer. And he focuses, too, on intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is prayer for others. And it's wanting something for somebody else that is so great that we can't do it totally ourselves. So we do what we can do, but we pray that God can fill in the blanks and God can do the rest. That is intercessory prayer. So we pray to be empowered by the Spirit to do what we can, and we trust that God can do the rest intercessory prayer, but we have to do our part. As we talk about carrying forward in prayer, we tend to use the words, in the name of Jesus. You hear that all the time. Somebody's wrapping up a prayer and they say, in the name of Jesus. We pastors say it a lot, in the name of Jesus. And exactly what does that mean? Well, it means that as we do what we do, we do it in the name of Jesus, we do it honoring Jesus, so we need to give our very best. We need to put our best foot forward. A colleague of mine tells a story about a time early in his adult life that he was a gopher. Now, you know what a gopher is. It's somebody who goes for this or somebody who goes for that. They are a gopher. Well, as my colleague told the story as he was beginning his time as a gopher, he spent some time going around with the owner of a construction company, the boss, if you will. And the boss was taking him in a truck and saying, now over here is a lumber yard and you might have to go to this lumber yard and get something for us. Over here is a painting store. You might have to go and get some paint sometime. Over, over here is a store that has tile and carpet. You might have to go here sometime. And as you go there, you're going in my name. You're going in the name of this company. So give your very best. And as the colleague would tell the story, he realized that he had responsibility. He had to do what he was doing in the right way. He had to give his very best because he was doing things. He was being a gopher in the name of his boss and this company that his boss founded. We do what we do in the name of Jesus. We want to honor Jesus. We want to lift up Jesus. So we help out others, we put ourselves out there, and we let God do that extra bit to make everything happen. Throughout this month of August, we've been focusing on the prophet Habakkuk. We've had uh, four weeks now that we've talked about Habakkuk. And uh, Pastor Christina had her Old Testament reading today, which was again from Habakkuk chapter three. Now, a bit of a refresher on Habakkuk. Habakkuk is one of the 12 minor prophets. He's doing his prophetic work about the 6th century B.C. And the situation in this uh, country of uh, Judah that Habakkuk is working with is that they've been corrupt. In fact, they've been awful. They've not treated each other well. Leadership has been poor. People have used power in wrong ways. So Habakkuk has talked to the people, has talked to the leaders and said, you have to change your ways. But the people haven't done anything differently. So eventually, Habakkuk pleads to God and says, God, you've got to intervene here. You've got to get involved in the things here in Judah. And God says, all right, all right, I hear you. I'm going to get involved. And I'm going to bring in the Babylonians, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, the cruel Babylonians. And Habakkuk can't believe it. He's like, I'm glad, God, that you're intervening. But, but the Babylonians and King Nebuchadnezzar, there's no way. They're like worse than the people in Judah. But God says, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Habakkuk continues to plead to God. God continues to say, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And then as we get to our reading, again here in Habakkuk 3, Habakkuk basically lifts up a prayer. And he says, God, I've done all that I can do. I put myself out there to the highest degree. All I know now is that, God, you do the rest. And I may not understand your ways, God. I may not understand why things happen. But I know that you are God and that is bigger than anything else. The ultimate thing, God, is that I let you be God and do what you do. And again, the same holds true for us. We pray to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to be put forth into action, to do what we do in the name of Jesus, and we do our part, and we let God do the rest. 
So we find ourselves here in Cedar Rapids and in Marion and outlying areas trying to make sense of this derecho. We do pray so that we can be empowered to make a difference. But ultimately, we leave it up to God and let God do what God can do. And God will carry us forward. We have to have a faith and a trust that with everything going on, God is good and God is always there. May God bless as we do journey forward and carry on. Amen. We now come together for prayers in the life of the church. And as always, thank you to uh, each of you for sending these prayers to me and also to Pastor Christina. It's good to know what is going on in each of your lives. As we are recording this uh, service a little bit earlier, there may be some additional prayers out there. And again, please uh, send those to us. But I do want to lift up the uh, list that I have. I want to simply uh, lift up a few joys. Uh, one is all the uh, line workers out there and line workers from all over the Midwest have been coming in here and it's been great to see all of our line workers helping us get uh, power again after the uh, derecho. And it's been good to see our city workers out and about and again, people working with the uh, skid loaders and the uh, dump trucks and uh, again, getting people coming together is a very good thing to help us out there. Also lifting up uh, tree repair companies and extra workers. And again, just uh, so many folk helping us to get back to some semblance of a uh, normal life. Might also mention some of our uh, relief workers and people helping out with food. Certainly want to lift up uh, Willie Ray's uh, Q Shack. He's been getting a lot of attention and uh, well-deserved and uh, a lot of people providing food for all those who need it and all those who are working right now to uh, get us back to where we need to be. So certainly uh, a lot of uh, joy there and also lift up the uh, food pantry exchange. It was nice to have that in sync with the Kennedy High School. We mentioned that in the opening announcements and we'll be doing that again this coming Tuesday. So good that we can partner up together. Another joy is a little girl named uh, Hattie. She's the uh, daughter of uh, Eric Engelman's friend and she'd been in an accident uh, with, uh, with a tree and is doing much, much better. We've been keeping her in prayers, but again, things are much better for her. So we celebrate all of that. As far as concerns go, do want to again lift up everybody in our area who's uh, struggling and trying to make ends meet. But also there's other matters going on even beyond this uh, area that we're in. I want to lift up uh, fires out in Colorado. My uh, aunt uh, Terry and Uncle Lonnie uh, mentioned that to me this past week that they're working through all of that out there. So I want to lift up the, those folk out in the uh, mountains area. Also Lisa Roche from our congregation had a procedure this past week. So prayers for her healing and again lift up those who are currently without power. Uh, we still have some people out there without power and also just some mental health concerns. This uh, time that we're in following the uh, derecho and also with the pandemic has been a lot for many, many people, for many of us. So prayers for many folk on that end. But again, glad that uh, we can come together, glad that we can lift up these joys and concerns. With all of that, let us have time for a silent meditation. I'll move us into a pastoral prayer and then we'll have our Lord's Prayer. Mighty and wondrous God, we do thank you for this a good day. We thank you for this a fresh start to a day. And God, we thank you for all of life. Life is not easy. Life is many times challenging. Some things we bring on ourselves, some things that we have no control over. But with it all, God, we carry forward. We try to be faithful. We know that you meet us in our time of need. You give us sisters and brothers that surround us. And you help us find good in the midst of bad. And you help us carry forward. And certainly in the uh, midst of this uh, time following the storm, we do carry forward. We know that we're not alone and that uh, so many are working hard to make our lives as good as they can be as we try to assist others along the way. Certainly uh, carry us forward into the end of this month and into the fall. Certainly uh, so much uh, uncertainty out there and certainly be with our schools and the uh, leaders, be with our city leaders, uh, be with our state leaders, be with our national leaders, be with so many people who have tough decisions to make and help us to be supportive and again, to keep caring for God as your people. We speak all this in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it certainly has been good to worship with each of you. 
I do yearn for the day that we can worship together in person here in the sanctuary. I know that day will come. But in the meantime, I'm so appreciative of our technology and people like Eric Wiley who work behind the scenes so that we can have our worship services online. So go in peace, and we'll let Pastor Christina send us out. And now may you go in peace to bring about justice in the world, and may you know that God is God.